and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. Verbum Domini. Let those to be ordained deacons come forward. <coughs> Vincent DePaul J. Drevich. Present. Daniel T. Giblin. Jeffrey S. Hanna. Ronald E. Lewis. Timothy P. Lynch. James Mahar. Richard Malamut. Patrick J. Mandrakia. Harry J. Morris. Myron A. Moskowitz. Richard G. Napoli. Thomas G. Phillips. Paul A. Quinn. Thomas P. Quinn. Joseph A. Ruggiero. C. William Shearer. Thomas L. Taylor. Present. 
John J. Todor. Dennis P. Warner. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiring among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the diaconate. Praised be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Bishop Thomas, brother priests and deacons, dear ordinands, dear wives and children of these chosen men, dear candidates still preparing for the diaconate, dear friends, in our first reading, we recalled the words of God, the words that he spoke, to Jeremiah, to whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Have no fear, because I am with you, says the Lord. Today, these words are addressed to our deacons about to be ordained, whose names are important to the church. They are Vincent, Daniel, Jeffrey, Ronald, Timothy, James, Richard, Patrick, Harry, Myron, Richard, Thomas, Paul, Thomas, Joseph, William, Thomas, John, and Dennis. These men take their place today among the successors of the first deacons in a close, and sacramental partnership with the priests of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia, indeed with the priests of the world. This partnership is a partnership in the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is a vocation of special service to the people of God, special service closely associated with that of the priests. The service we are speaking about for our deacons is above all a service of charity. It is an outreach in the name of Jesus Christ and the church. The service of the diaconate is a dynamic part of the spiritual structure of the church as willed by God. The service of each deacon is more than a personal contribution of an individual. It is part of the life of the church and part of the mystery of Christ. But in each individual, this service begins at the altar 
with the power that comes forth from the Eucharistic sacrifice. It is consolidated and intensified in personal prayer. It presupposes the witness of an upright life. This service strives to respond to so many needs, to needs wherever they are found among God's people. As a special sacramental service, the diaconate further extends and fulfills the service that baptism requires of all. My dear brothers, your training has helped you to understand the challenge you now embrace as part of the Church's life. Your wives and children are here to pledge collaboration and support, and we are so happy for this. Your call to, to service is sacramentally inspired and sustained, and it clearly challenges you to be like Christ, who says to each one of you, this is my commandment, love one another as I love you. Jesus further explains the type of love that he is talking about, saying, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are being asked, dear brothers, to lay down your life in service. Never before have you aspired to the greatness that you now take on. Jesus says, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. In practice, your service will require zeal and the ingenuity to discover the needs of the people of God and to help them fulfill them. The needs of the poor, the sick and suffering, the homeless, those uninstructed in the faith, those in need of love, those languishing in despair, all those in need of Christ. And so you fulfill a basic role in communicating Christ by word and example. Your word must be inspired by God's word as proclaimed, interpreted, and lived by the church. Your example must be deeply rooted in prayer and charity. It must express a life of justice, honesty, and truth. You will always be expected to speak and act in communion with Benedict our Pope and with his successors, with me and my successors, with the Presbyterate of Philadelphia, and in the communion of faith of the Universal Church. In giving you a sacramental configuration to Christ, the servant of humanity, the Church is asking a great deal of you. She is counting on your perseverance and on the authenticity of your life. To accomplish this, you will absolutely need the energy and strength that flow from the death and resurrection of the Lord, which are renewed in the Eucharistic sacrifice. And so often, you will have the opportunity to share in this sacrifice at the side of the priest. The Church, moreover, needs your efforts to model the relationships required of Christian families in charity, prayer, and openness to the needs of others. In all your life and ministry, what is needed is a team mentality of collaboration. And the team is the Church of Jesus Christ. And the rules of the game are the gospel of Christ as proclaimed and interpreted and lived by the Church. 
every individual gift of yours is needed and esteemed, but all of them must be coordinated by the action of the Holy Spirit in the communion of the Church. In years to come, your words of faith must flow from a heart steeped in prayer. Everything that you teach and communicate will be in union with the teaching of the Church, which is one holy, Catholic, and apostolic. Now, more than ever before, the Church needs your holiness and zeal. And this means that you personally need the Eucharist and the sacrament of penance, prayer, meditation on the Word of God, an intimate relationship with Christ, and a loving trust in His Mother Mary. An intimate relationship with Christ requires an openness to the inspirations of the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit can never contradict the guidance He offers us through the Church. Through your selfless giving and through the holiness of your life, Christ's own ministry of service in the world will be perpetuated. His servant church will be more effective, more authentic, more compassionate, more loving. Yes, dear brothers, the love of God passes through your ministry of service as deacons just as it passes through the humanity of Christ, the great servant of the Church, and through the humanity of Mary, the handmaid of the Lord. From now on, as deacons, you too will be special signs of God's love in the Church, because you will be dedicated to a service that can only be motivated and sustained by God's love. Dear brothers about to be ordained deacons and dear friends in Christ, today, with great joy, the Church proclaims the revelation of God's love in the humble and self-effacing service of His new deacons. Amen. Dear sons, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve to be consecrated for the Church's ministry by the laying on of my hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? I do. Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience, as the Apostle urges, and to proclaim this faith in word and deed 
according to the gospel and the church's tradition. Those of you do all of you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life and in keeping with this spirit and what is required of you to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and indeed for the whole world. Do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ, of whose body and blood you are ministers at the altar? Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do 
Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessing on these his servants, whom in his kindness he raises to the sacred order of the diaconate.
Saint Mary Magdalene. Pray. Ignatius of Antioch, Saint Lawrence, Saint Vincent, Saint George, Saint Thomas More, Saint Maximilian Colby. and Saint Felicity, Saint Agnes, Saint Barbara, Saint Eva, Saint Joan of Arc, Saint Gregory, Merciful 
unto our sinners. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church. Lord, we ask you chosen men. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify these chosen men. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate these chosen men. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the Living God, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers and graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing these men we present, for in our judgment we believe them worthy to exercise sacred ministries through Christ our Lord. Amen. 